We're back at the board because one of the main topics of this channel lately has been where we need to put HVAC systems and how those HVAC systems need to be configured. You need a place to put HVAC and the best people who are designing these days, and that includes normal people who are designing their own renovations or dream homes or whatever, are designing places to put the HVAC equipment and the ductwork into their design. And that's a warning. For those of you who are not thinking about that already, you need to get on that. Now, there are two main ways that we can do this. We can use a conditioned crawl space or a conditioned attic. Crawl space is below the house, attic is above the house. If you watch Matt Reisinger's channel, which I know statistically many of you are, and many of my clients do as well, you will see him do again and again conditioned attics. And that is because he builds in Texas. That's not because conditioned attics are better. It might be because that's just the style of construction that they're used to in that particular place. So if you're not in Matt Reisinger's neighborhood in Austin, Texas, it might be that actually a conditioned crawl space is way better for you than a conditioned attic. And actually, I'm gonna go ahead and put my money where my math is. At the end of this video, Matt Reisinger will join us and tell us if I haven't convinced him that a conditioned crawl space actually beats the heck out of a conditioned attic every day of the week. We've got four things that we're talking about here. Temperature, skin, air, and water. This is my conditioned crawl space. It is the pinnacle of, in my opinion, what a crawl space should be. Perfectly clean, perfectly dry, no bugs. And you've got plenty of room to roll around on your fun little rolly chair. This is the light. I hope you don't mind my hand-drawn uh, stuff here. This is gonna be a classic video, I can already tell. And I wanted this to be a classic look. So first thing, temperature. Crawl space is naturally cool. It is connected to the ground. Attic is naturally hot. It is exposed to the sun. This is one of the things about vented crawl spaces and why they actually don't work. The science, science, back in the 60s and 70s when people were like, oh yeah, we should just vent crawl spaces, actually doesn't work at all. And they proved that in the 70s, 80s with actual research uh, and 90s. So it's, there's a lot out there. Uh, crawl spaces will always be cooler than outside, and that's because the sun never shines in a crawl space. We like that, generally. Now, there are some issues where like, you could have actually condensation happen a lot sooner in a crawl space, so you wanna take care of that, which is why conditioning it is so, so important. And I'm not just talking about encapsulating, because there's a lot of people out there who will say, oh, I have an encapsulated attic or an encapsulated uh, crawl space, and the crawl space will be cooler than the house is and cooler than outside, and the attic will be hotter than the house is and like approaching outside humidity levels even, which is very dangerous. So just because something is encapsulated and it looks like it's part of the house does not mean that it actually is. That's why testing is so, so important. Blower door testing with zonal pressure testing. You can see that in a video that I'm linking on screen right now. This is my conditioned attic. It looks like it's part of the enclosure. You can see the other part of the roof over there. And you can see that it's not just looks like it is part of the conditioned space, it actually also acts like it is the same exact temperature and humidity up here, just like it is down in the crawl space as the rest of the living space in this house. So we like cool because if we're trying to contain uh, something that's gonna be conditioning our home, HVAC equipment, heating, cooling, ventilation, cool is better because the what we call the delta T, which is a nerdy way of saying uh, temperature differential, is gonna be much slimmer in the crawl space than in the attic. You might have attics in the United States of America that near 150 degrees temperature. That is unsafely hot for people to work in. Consider that for your HVAC guys. Also consider that the things you're putting in that hot, hot, hot attic are even colder than the house is. You might have HVAC ducts running air conditioning that's 55 degrees. So metal that's 55 degrees in a 150 degree attic. That's almost a 100 degree temperature differential. In a crawl space, you're talking about maybe 55 degree cooling ducts. In a 65 or whatever degree crawl space, that's very, very slight. So the danger level, both for thermal transfer, that's bleeding out of the house or into the house, and also for condensation, I think is much more severe in an attic. Second thing, the skin. The skin in a crawl space is very small compared to the skin of a conditioned attic. So if you're trying to condition a crawl space, let's imagine as an example that we've got a 1500 square foot footprint. You're gonna have a four foot crawl space wall and that four foot crawl space wall is gonna have a square footage that you'll have to insulate of 680 square feet. The same 1500 square foot footprint of house with only a 312 roof pitch will have a square footage that you'll have to insulate of 1800 square feet. That's almost three times as much insulation that you're gonna to have to install in there. Also, 
as addressed before, the amount of insulation you're gonna have to put up there in that roof deck is much, much thicker than the amount that you'll have to put in the crawl space wall because again, that delta T is much bigger in the attic. Next is air leakage. A crawl space, because it is partly, at least, sunken into the ground, is gonna be tighter, naturally, than a conditioned attic. Conditioned attic is really difficult to make tight and also consider that if you are doing an encapsulated conditioned attic, you are almost always gonna be pushed very hard, if not restricted completely, to using spray foam insulation. Spray foam insulation, Matt Reisinger will agree with me on this. Everybody uh, has come to call it, in a very civil way, an unreliable air seal. So if that's what you're depending on, you're probably gonna do have to do some work. That means blower door tests and then finding the problems and fixing them, or aero barrier on top of that, something like that. So generally, uh, a crawl space can be insulated a much easier way with easier materials. It can be installed with a less skilled crew. It's less difficult to do. You're not wearing a full body suit with a you know, helmet and oxygen supplied into the back and all that stuff. So the fact that you've got the smaller and larger enclosure areas, and also because crawl spaces, because they're not like an architectural feature, are gonna be naturally much simpler shaped than a, a roof line. If you look at a lot of the roof lines, you go into these like wealthy neighborhoods, um, it's very difficult to actually get those to perform well because you've got so many places where the shape changes and then you have to change your technique. So consider that that also is gonna be a major factor. Now, if we're gonna be putting mechanical equipment in these conditioned spaces, these little buffer spaces that we've turned into part of our home, if you have water leak out of them because a heat pump, an air conditioner, a dehumidifier all have condensate drains that come out of them, they will create water and then you have to put that water someplace. If they leak, which does happen, then you have water in your crawl space. And in my case, it's not a big deal. Partly out of laziness and also partly because if there is condensation on the outside of this uh, ductwork, it will drip down onto the concrete and I'll be able to actually see it. And I've seen no condensation drips on the floor, even from the ductwork that's coming in from outside to feed the ERV. If you have water leak in your attic, it is a major problem. So there are lots of steps that you will take to make double, triple, quadruple sure that it's not gonna ruin your whole house and result in a giant mold claim uh, and you having to move out temporarily while they fix stuff. On the attic, I did insulate them, and that is because it is possible that these ducts will become 55 degrees if they're being returned at 75 degrees. There's about a 20 degree delta T that you can expect. So if these were to hit 55 degrees, that is my dew point in this attic, and they would be wet on the outside. When you've got ducts above condition space, you generally always are insulating them just as an insurance policy to make sure that if they do hit the dew point, it's not gonna ruin your life because the air here can't reach it through this insulation. Now there are two places where a conditioned crawl space actually does make things a little bit more complicated. And I wanna cover those two because like, that's fair. One is radon. If you have a vented crawl space right now and you then condition it, you will be taking that radon that was coming up through the ground, through your vapor barrier, through the slab, and then putting it into the house. So you'll have to figure out a way that you're gonna address that. And there are ways to do that. Um, by the way, this only matters if you are comparing a conditioned crawl space to a vented crawl space. If in the case of a conditioned attic, we're talking about like in Matt Reisinger's homes, a slab on grade, you have exactly the same rate on exposure, in my experience, as you would in a conditioned crawl space. And lastly, if you are using the conditioned crawl space to run your mechanicals, then you are going to tend toward using floor vents. And I hate floor vents. Children drop things on the floor. My floors are sticky all the time. And so if you can imagine them dropping stuff, crayons, food, uh, whatever, in addition to pets, uh, dander going down and settling in those vents, number one, you're gonna have to clean those, which means you're taking off the grills and you're addressing that. Number two, the grill itself is gonna be a heavier material, which means it's gonna have a lower uh, airflow rate because it's gonna be made of something thicker, thicker metal or thicker wood. In many cases, if you've got hardwood floors, you're gonna want them to match. That's fine, but you're gonna have a restriction there. So all that needs to be taken into account. In that case, I would say use solid metal ducts. Don't use the thing where a lot of people like to put flex on the last three feet of uh, ductwork so that it mitigates the sound from the HVAC system. If you pick a good HVAC system that is quiet by itself, you do not need to do that. And I know that because I did it in my own house and I found out that it's a total myth and you can just use a quiet piece of equipment 
and it takes care of it. Now, it's purple because you can work your way around this. What you want to do is follow the cardinal rule of duct design, which is don't blow air on people. And in the case of a conditioned attic, you don't have to worry about that because you have ceiling vents. And it's very easy to not blow air on people using ceiling vents. So in the case of floor vents, you wanna try and get the walls aligned, and this is a framer conversation, in such a way that you can actually take ducts through the floor and then bring them up through walls with what's called a wall stack, which is a rectangular duct. Uh, as so that you can get it close to the ceiling, if possible, and blow out across the ceiling, that would be great. I wouldn't try to get it up above and use ceiling vents again, because then you're taking a lot of 90 degree turns at that point. So that's not necessary, but this is the one place where I think a conditioned attic has the advantage over a conditioned crawl space. So I have made my case. Let's find out what the boss has to say about it. Matt Reisinger, have we convinced you? Corbett, super impressive. You've convinced me I'm no longer doing conditioned attics. We're only <laughs> going to crawl spaces. <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe I, I, you. No, seriously, though, I really, really liked, I thought your points were incredibly well thought out and well taken. And just as a point of comparison, uh, I have done several conditioned crawl spaces uh, on jobs, and I've done two or three vented crawl spaces where I try to do some version of spray foam at the floor line. Uh, I haven't done that in 10 years or so, um, and I don't love that. I mm. wouldn't do that today, but let's let's say that I tried it and kind of, I 100% agree that spray foam is an unreliable air seal. Uh, but one thing I think that that is that is something you need to remember or your audience needs to remember is one of the reasons why we do so much slab on grade is we have a very very rocky soil here in Texas, and not every not everywhere, but where I, for instance, in my neighborhood, I can dig down six inches and hit solid limestone. And so to do a crawl space means I'm doing four steps into the house and I'm going to be way abnormal if I'm building in an existing neighborhood or if I'm building out in the country, uh, you know, I'm going to know that I'm going to have like a front porch or something with several steps into the house. It's not going to be very, um, it's not going to meet, for instance, my visitability ordinance, which I have in the city of Austin. I have to have less than four inches of step into the house. Uh, and so there's all these other things that are kind of play a factor. So I end up, honestly, most of the time doing conditioned attics, not because it's necessarily the best, but because it's kind of dictated to me by either kind of some code issues or some soil issues, that sort of thing. But the houses where I've done conditioned crawl spaces, I was, I didn't have rock on those houses. And in fact, at least, at least, uh, one or two of them, I had really bad expansive clays, where we were wanting to dig out some expansive clays. Then we put really big piers down to solid rock and we basically built a pier and beam foundation, did a perimeter beam and then used spray foam, uh, you know, closed cell spray foam on the perimeter. And I totally, I loved your, for instance, the one that really resonated with me was the water issues. Hmm. You know, yes, one exclamation part, we could have water in our crawl space, but what's it going to leak onto? You know, I sh your house has... Uh, a concrete slab under there, which is what I've done too. I love that. I mean, what, what's what's the harm? What's going to happen? Nothing. Um, versus I have had at least one house that had a, uh, a brand of HVAC equipment we all know and love that leaked real bad onto a customer's ceiling and mm -hmm. ruined the kitchen ceiling. And I look like an idiot and the manufacturer looked like an idiot. And it was like a nine month old house. So, you know, that that resonates with me big time. Like, oh my gosh, yeah. And, you know, I'm always thinking about overflow pans and I really like the belt and suspenders approach. So that resonated with me. The other thing that I thought you did a great job on was um, laying out the cost difference. You know, thinking about your perimeter insulation on a crawl space, you know, your example of, well, it's four foot tall, let's say, and we've got this many linear feet. And I think about all the money I spend on condition attics. And it's not inexpensive, even if you're just doing, let's say, an open cell spray foam and maybe adding air barrier, which is kind of your least cost option. And then you get into monopoly framing like I did at my house and, you know, perfect wall like Joe Stebrick talks about. Same thing. You know, you just have a lot of other parts and pieces. And yes, it's a great house, but it just ratchets up the cost that much more. So I'm very, very impressed. So one thing that I might add for you, though, is. If you want those vents up higher, 
I thought of this just as you were talking. What about doing a high velocity system? What about a Unico uh, where you run that Unico in the crawl space and then run it up into your partitions and you could blow those on high wall spaces. I got a buddy, Wade Paquin in uh, Rhode Island that uses a lot of Unico and he'll run them and it, they like figure out where that's not going to blow on people. And they've had great success. I've never put one in before, but they've had great success with them. So yeah. that could be a way to kind of get the best of both worlds. Uh, but man, terrific video, dude. Super impressive. I, awesome. I love the way you laid it out. That's great. Thank you very much, Matt. And you're awesome. Thank you very much for taking the time with us today. For sure, man. All right, you guys, please do comment below if you have other things to add. Like and subscribe. Tune in next time. Thank you.